What's up, everybody? This is a new device I just created. It's sort of like a chaos pad. Um, I had some Nintendo DS touchscreens lying around and kind of wanted to use them for something. And yeah, so use the Teensy 3.2, uh, Teensy Audio Board, and the Teensy Audio Library to generate the sounds. And you can hear. So yeah, it's, uh, mostly I'm using it for drums. Um, it has some synthesized drum sounds. It also has an FM synth, a melodic synth, and a sample player. It's powered by USB. It has a audio input and output. This blue button here is for tap tempo. So once you get a tempo going, the sequence starts automatically, and then you can just touch the screen. And there was originally four different quadrants here, which uh, still exists for the synth drums. That's a kick, snare, hi-hat, and tom. So as you can see, as you go from left to right, the pitch will change. And up to down, up and down will do, like the repeats will increase. So all the pitch type pitch type drums will have the pitch effect. The snare kind of has like a filter effect on it as well. The hi-hat definitely has like a filter effect going left to right. And then the tom also has some pitching up to down. So yeah, those are all the synthesized drum sounds. So this top knob here is the volume for the synth drums and then these four knobs here affect the decay time of the sound. So first one is for the kick, so you can hear the uh, second one is for the snare, you can hear the length changing there, then we got hi-hat, and same deal for the tom. So that's all the synth drums, and there's also an FM melodic synth in here, and that's the volume knob for that. And for that, the knobs do various things. The uh, first, well, the first knob will do the length, kind of the decay of the sound, just like the drums. The second knob will do the LFO speed, and the third knob, the LFO amount. If I bring up the length there, you can kind of hear the LFO a little bit more. Then, then the last knob is the kind of the octave of the sound. Just a multiplication of the the frequency of the the cell that you're on there. So you can play it just like the drums. And you have eight notes, and it's a uh, the scale is A minor. So in addition to the FM, there's also a sample player which. I currently have loaded in with uh, drum sounds to sort of match and uh, complement the synth drums that are in there, but you have eight different samples you can use, which are defined by these cells on the screen. So I've kind of just kept some drum sounds in there, but you can really put whatever you want in. It can sound pretty cool with some melodic samples as well. So. Here's an example of the uh, samples playing along with the synth drums. So you 
get some small changes happening with the synth synthesized drums as far as pitch, and then you also have those samples playing. You can also bring in all three of the sounds. back we have an input and an output and you can record samples in through the input which I'll show right now all right so we got the OP1 hooked up now uh, we have the output of the OP1 going into the input of the chaos box thing and we got some just regular old drum samples just some stock samples from the OP1 and we are going to just sample one of those quickly into this new chaos box thing. So you hit the red button there and that will, you can uh, then choose which bank you'd like to record that sample to. And that corresponds to the position it will be played back on. So now we're on the first one and we can change our input volume to get a good level on that. And then you can see the green LEDs show up around and that means it has met the threshold that we're setting <clears throat> and we set that with the first knob so if we have the threshold down too low you won't see those green LEDs which means it's not going to meet the threshold if you try to record that so we got to turn it up quite a bit and you start to see those green LEDs which means it will actually trigger the threshold which will start the recording so once you're ready to go and you have everything all set up and you have the sample just go ahead and hit the record button again and now you're in standby mode which is in, uh, shown by the yellow LEDs and then hit your sample and that's recording and then stop the recording and there you go then you have the uh, sample saved to the first cell and then we can tap in a new tempo here to get a BPM going turn the sample bank up and there's the kick drum we just sampled. So it's pretty easy to get samples into it. Just record them straight in. So there we go. And uh, you can record up to eight as there's eight cells to play back. We currently just have some drum sounds in there, but I've had some melodic samples in there which actually sound pretty cool. So yeah, pretty, pretty simple to get the samples in. But um, as it does have an input on the back, I thought it'd be pretty cool to try to figure out how to synchronize from the OP-1, because the OP-1 does send out a pulse to synchronize to the pocket operators. So if we set that up here, can't really see the screen, but basically I'm putting it into uh, the sync mode as if it were sending a, a pulse to a pocket operator. Let me go ahead and uh, start the sequence and just, you can see the, the boxes responded to the the pulse is being sent out. And you can, um, it'll only synchronize to the fastest pulse being sent, which I believe is uh, two pulses per quarter note for the OP1. You can go ahead and play along with the uh, with the track there.
doesn't stop the OP1 and the sequencer stops immediately. So yeah, it's pretty cool. I got a pulse sync input for it too. So on my uh, Raspberry Pi looper, I am also now sending out a pulse clock for from that so I can use this um, synchronized with with the Raspberry Pi looper so I can add some more drums and stuff and then send those back to the looper, record them in, and have some more more patterns. There's some issues with the screen on this unit. It's kind of giving me false triggers based on how I've mounted the screen into the wood, which I'd probably change on a future one, but it works. It just uh, wasn't the best mounting method. Um, these are pretty easy to build, and I'm thinking about potentially building some of them for sale. I do need to finish up this unit here, which is a, a four-voice polysynth. Um, this is my last one to build out of the four, and uh, just probably going to try to do that this weekend or something to get those up for sale. I already have um, some folks that want to buy these, so... I will still have to shoot a video for those when they're all finished up. But hopefully those will be coming soon and available for purchase, even though they're in very limited quantity. Um, yeah, but this guy, I'm, I am thinking about uh, potentially redesigning it a little bit and possibly selling it. So, yeah, so anyway, um, I know this... My channel is full of things that I build for myself and nobody else has, but I hope you guys get um, enjoy these videos anyway. I, I will potentially be building some stuff for sale, like I said. It's just a matter of trying to find some time to do it, and I don't really need the money at all. It's just uh, it's hard to find motivation to build a second unit when I already have one for myself. But anyway, I um, hope you guys enjoy these videos. And I might potentially post the code up for this at some point, depending on if I want to sell these or not. Kind of depends on my motivation there. But anywho, I hope you enjoyed this video nonetheless, and uh, thanks for watching.